Well, for the rest of us, we are going to be in the book of uh, John, in uh, St. John in, in the New Testament. And we're going to be in chapter number five. Okay. And the, uh, title, the title of my message this morning is, is simple. It's this. It's, do you wish to get better? And this is uh, based on a phrase that Jesus uh, shares in this uh, section of scripture. But let me go ahead and pray as you turn there. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, that you would anoint my lips of clay one more time to speak your word to your people. Now, Lord, you said that the vision, that it will not tarry, but it would speak. And then when it speaks, that we may run with it, Lord God. So I pray that we take the vision from this house and run forward with it, Lord God, because it's not our vision, but it's yours. And we thank you for it in the wonderful name of Jesus. And God's people said, amen. So we're going to start here in uh, verse number five. And um, we're going to read the first two scriptures um, here, verse five and six. It says, a man was there who had been ill for 38 years. Now, now think about that for a minute. A man was there. Now, he, there is meaning the, the poor Beth of Bethesda, and uh, which we find, you know, which if you read the first four verses, that's what it's talking about. It says, when Jesus saw him lying there, and knew what he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you wish to get well? Or as I dubbed it, do you wish to get better? And I think what happens a lot of times in, in our lives and when we're, you know, this man had faced this condition and this illness for 38 years and, and he began to, um, I think a lot of times we began to, deal with things and put up with things and we settle for less than what God has for us. And, and so when Jesus asked this man at the pool of Bethesda, do you, do you wish to get well? You know, you would hope that a man that sat there for a long time wishing to be thrown, you know, wishing to be put into the pool after the waters were stirred by the angels and that he would be healed, that his answer would immediately be yes. But, but to, 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 our surprise, and to at least my surprise when I read this scripture, if, if we go forward in verse number seven, it says this. It says, the sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred, stirred up. But, the, but, but while, I am com while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up, pick up your pallet and walk. And see, what, when, we, when, I, when I look at this scripture, and, I, and when I think about when we ask God, you know, we, we had just prayer requests this morning, or maybe you petitioned the Lord for things in your life, and maybe you're praying about situations in your family, your finances, for the city, for the country, whatever we're praying for. I think sometimes what, what happened to this man is he, what he was saying was, God, bless me, but bless me in my condition. You know, feed me, feed my condition. He, his answer wasn't, yes, I want to be healed. His answer was why he couldn't get to the pool. His answer was the excuse. And, and when we look at this, when we look at this man who was sick for 38 years, instead of, instead of rising up and realizing who Jesus was, he was there, he, he had been healing and laying hands on the sick, um, before this, the, his fame had gone out before he showed up at this pool. He gave his, he, he, he talked about his reasons why he wasn't. And I think sometimes when we're, when we're faced with situations in our life, we, we look at the excuses of why we're not where we're supposed to be in Jesus Christ. And we settle for less. And, and if you remember Moses. And he was, and God had sent Moses to, to set the, the children of Israel free out of bondage, out, out, of the, out of Egyptian bondage to slavery. And the first time Moses went to Pharaoh, what was Pharaoh's response? He said, well, you can go, but you can go up there for a little while and worship your God, but you have to leave your children and your possessions. 
That was, the, that was the first thing. And see, sometimes some of us, you know, we, we think we're getting an answer from God and we run towards something that looks like it's the promise, but it's not the complete promise. Because God wanted them to have what? He wanted them to have all. Jesus said this. He said, I came to give you life and life what? More abundantly. You know, that doesn't mean there's not struggles. It doesn't mean that things won't try to come your way, that things may not try to hinder you. What that means is don't settle for less. And so, so Moses had to do what? He had to go back to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said, well, you know what? You can, you can go, but leave your possessions and your children behind. And Moses was like, no, that's not good enough. And of course, we know the plagues that were sent. We know all the things that happened during that time. But then finally Moses goes to Pharaoh and he's fed up at this point because now we, we're, we're, we're at the time where the plague, where, where you know, God had told Moses, he says, I'm going to send the death angel. Now, now, now this is where we get the, the term Passover. And he took, he, he told all of the children, the Hebrew children, he said, take the sacrifice and mark the doorpost. And when the death angel comes, he'll, go, he'll pass over all the houses that are marked with that blood of that sacrifice. And I hope I'm in the right place this morning that we've been marked with the blood of Jesus Christ. And when death tries to come our way and sickness and disease and depression and doubt and anxiety and all these things that would try to take us out and take us away, confusion, the enemy is, comes to kill, steal, and destroy but Jesus said, I come to give you life. And so when that death angel came and he passed over, finally Moses said, fine, you can leave. Not Moses, but Pharaoh told Moses, you can leave. Finally, his people were let go. And they're walking and they're on the path to head to the promised land. But another dilemma rises. There's a sea. There, wasn't no, there was no Market Street Bridge to cross over. There was no Veterans Bridge to walk across or get in their vehicles and take all their stuff. There were no U-Haul trucks. There might have been a camel U-Haul service. I'm not sure. That was a joke. But they had the, the sea in front of them. And Pharaoh, burned up with anger, sent the army after, him, after the Hebrew children. And they, and they stood there, and, and, and Moses asked, what, what should we do? And the Lord said this. He said, be still and know that I am God. He said, be still, know that I am God. And see, we can't oftentimes, and what happened was Moses, God gave Moses an instruction. He said, take thy, thy staff and, 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 and put it into the ground, and I will split the sea. And you will cross over the Jordan on dry ground. See, a lot of times we're so busy complaining and murmuring and backbiting and talking and doing all these things and complaining about what's wrong with the country and what's wrong with our neighborhoods and what's wrong with this and that, that we're not, we don't sit still long enough to hear what it is that God is saying. We miss the instruction. But thank God Moses heard the instruction. Thank God that all of the children of Israel followed his lead and they walked across on dry ground. And as, as Pharaoh's army pursued them, the same sea that was in hindrance now became a weapon and it engulfed the army of Pharaoh to never come against the children of Israel again at that time. See, sometimes we need to close the door on what we thought we knew. And this sick man, he, he thought he needed to be in that pool. He thought he needed someone to carry him there. He thought he needed an escort. He needed someone to uh, push all the others away and, and usher him into the pool. But all he really needed was a word from Jesus. And here we see that in verse, in verse uh, 7 and 8, in, in verse 8, when Jesus tells him, get up. Pick up your, pa your pallet and walk. But the scripture isn't done. Let's look at verse 9. 
It says, immediately the man became well and picked up his pallet and began to walk. Now it was, now it was the Sabbath on that day. So the Jews were saying to the man who was, who was cured, it is the Sabbath, and it is not permissible for you to carry your pallet. Now this man has sat there by the pool for 38 years. No one could help him. Sat there with no help, sick, laying there. He gets healed. And now all of a sudden, they want to throw on what's right and what's wrong. It's not permissible for you to do that. You're not allowed to do that. That's against the law. That's against the tradition of what we've been taught to do on the Sabbath. So, so, so Jesus comes, and, and so, so they ask the man, and, and let's look at verse number 11. It says, but he answered them, and he, he who made me well was the one who said to me, Pick up your pallet and walk. They asked him, who is the man who said to you, pick up your pallet and walk? In verse 13, it says, it says that the man who was, who was headed did not know who it was. The man who was healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had slipped away while there, while there was a crowd in that place. Afterward. Now, after the crowd cleared, all the, everybody went home. After everything was settled. It says, afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Happens to you. See, what, what I want to get our attention on is sometimes we miss what it is that God wants to do in the moment because of what, we're, we, what we were accustomed to. This man for 38 years was accustomed to being sick. And you may say, Pastor, well, how do you, you know, yeah, this is a nice story in the Bible. But hey, at one point, I was that man. 38 years of sugar diabetes. 38 years of, 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 of terrible things that, that went on in my body. Over 38 years, I had grown accustomed to some certain things. I've, I put up with some things. But finally, there, there come a day, there come an hour, there come a moment in my life where I said enough is enough. And I got a hold of this Bible and I said at least either, part, either the whole thing's true, if part of it's true, the whole thing's got to be true. And if it's not, then we might as well have a bonfire and burn all these Bibles. If the Bible that, that said that God would save my soul can't heal my body, then what am I doing? What are we doing? And, I, and, and so I got a hold of God's word. And we stood and we, we, and we brought, the, the first time we came here, we brought the, the, um, the journals with a hundred scriptures from the Old and New Testament that talk about how God wants to make us whole, to encourage us, to fight on, to encourage us to go further. You may say well, this morning, well, I, I know this person who died and that person who died. I only know this is that Jesus said that I came to give you life, a life more abundantly. The enemy will, tr will, will, will try to kill you with a hangnail if you let him. And the only part of the Bible that isn't working for us this morning is the part that we don't allow him to speak into our lives about and believe. That's, that's from A to Z. That's from, that's from, from Genesis to Revelation. That's from Job to Malachi. There's another little joke in there. If it's in there, it's like Prego. If it's in there, it's in the Bible. And we got to seek out his word. We got to seek out his presence. We got to seek out that God, he's a good God who loves us and wants nothing but the best for each and every one of us. And when we yield ourselves to that, to that calling, when we yield ourselves, when we come like, like the prodigal son, when we've come to the end of ourselves and realize that in my father's house, even the servants eat best. And here's the thing. The father didn't kick the son out. But at the same time, the father was there in the front yard as a young man came, came back home. 
I don't know who you are today. I'm not sure where you're at spiritually or maybe the whole time I'm up here speaking, you're looking at me wanting to throw darts. I really can't tell because the light is in my eyes. But I want to say this. I know one thing, that Jesus Christ, he loves you. He wants the best for you. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. He wants to, your, 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 your days on this earth to be filled with joy, with peace. And that confusion comes from the enemy. The enemy tries to bring confusion. And, there, and, and there's only two, there's two great commandments. And they asked Jesus, what's the greatest? He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And then the second one was love thy neighbor as thyself. In fact, in another scripture, Jesus challenged and said, it's easy to love those who can love you back. But you, you still got to love those who despitefully use you, talk about you. And when we can walk in that true love and that true forgiveness and that true repentive heart, then we can begin to see the glory of God move in such a way in our lives like we never did before. But we have a choice this morning. We can either be the man on the, on the mat that says, hey, bless my condition. I, this is just the way I am and you're going to have to accept me. Or we could take the challenge and say, Lord, when, when the Lord gives us a word. See, when Jesus gave him a word, he got up. And he walked. He was healed. When we, get, when we hear God's word and we walk in love and we, and we walk in repentance of wrongdoing, then and only then can we see God do the miraculous things that he wants to do in our lives, in our families, in those very situations that you pray for day in and day out. Those things that plague us, those things that haunt us, those things that keep us up at night, those things that have us wringing our hands and pacing the floor whether it's a lost loved one, whether it's, whether it's a job situation, whether it's your children on the other side of the country, no matter where it is, God wants to move. But when we go forward, when the place that God wants to take us to, it takes courage to get there. Because guess what? None of us have been there before. Because it's a new level. It's a new day. It's a new place. But, but in there, there's a new grace, there's a new mercy, there's new peace, and there's joy that, 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 that's unspeakable. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you need to make things right with your maker,